Picture a bustling emergency department late on a stormy evening. The phone rings, pediatric trauma inbound. Immediately, every sense is heightened. People scurry, monitors beep, stretchers roll. Our small protagonist, an eight-year-old child, injured on the playground, arrives. His guardians are frantic, eyes brimming with concern. Our mission is clear. We must unravel the story of what happened inside that precious skull and act swiftly. In pediatric head injuries, every second counts. Clinical aspects, mechanism of injury, blunt trauma, falls, sports-related hits, or vehicular collisions, non-accidental trauma, always consider abuse when the history is inconsistent or suspicious. Clinical sign symptoms, altered mental status, lethargy, confusion, irritability, or loss of consciousness, scalp or skull findings, bruises, swelling, lacerations, or step-offs suggesting a skull fracture, neurological signs, persistent vomiting, severe headache, seizures, focal deficits, vital sign clues, watch for Cushing's triad, hypertension, bradycardia, irregular respirations, suggestive of rising intracranial pressure, ICP, dot, pediatric differences, younger children may be unable to verbalize headache or dizziness, look for inconsolable crying, inability to feed, or changes in behavior, thinner skull bones and proportionally larger heads render them more susceptible to injury. Much like categorizing a film as action, drama, or thriller, we categorize traumatic brain injuries, TBI, in children by severity, mild TBI RGCS 13 to 15, child may appear dazed or confused but often is oriented, no prolonged loss of consciousness, moderate TBI RGCS 9 to 12, altered level of consciousness, possible focal neurological deficit, but still partially responsive. Severe TBI RGCS equal or less than 8, significantly reduced consciousness, airway protection and urgent intervention are critical. Remember to adapt the Pediatric Glasgow Coma Scale, PGCS, if the child is too young to speak or follow commands as an adult would. In the ED, we follow a structured script to avoid missing crucial steps, primary survey, ABCDE, a, airway, ensure its patent, consider cervical spine protection, B, breathing, check for adequate ventilation, oxygen saturation, respiratory rate, C, circulation, assess pulses, perfusion, blood pressure, look for signs of shock, D, Disability and neurological status rapid neuro check, pupils, size, reactivity, motor response, GCS score, E, exposure to environmental control, fully expose the patient to find any additional injuries, but keep them warm, secondary survey, detailed head-to-toe examination, look for scalp lacerations, palpate for skull step-offs, and assess any cerebrospinal fluid leakage from ears or nose. Imaging, non-contrast CT scan of the head is the gold standard for detecting acute hemorrhage, skull fractures, and significant edema. Pecan, pediatric emergency care applied. Research network, criteria can guide imaging decisions in mild TBI. Red flags include severe mechanism of injury, signs of basilar skull fracture, repeated vomiting, severe headache, etc., laboratory tests. CBC, electrolytes, coagulation profile, especially before any surgical intervention, dot, toxicology screen if suspicion of ingestion. Now comes the heart-pounding sequence, intervening to save a life, mild TBI IGCS 13 to 15. Observation, many children can be observed in the ED or short-term in the hospital if there are risk factors, 
Pain control, acetaminophen, 15 mg per kilogram per dose, or ibuprofen, 10 mg per kilogram per dose, as needed. Antiemetics, ondansetron, 0.15 mg per kilogram per dose, if vomiting persists, discharge criteria, normal neuro exam, stable vitals, responsible caregiver, clear instructions for red flags, worsening headache, repeated vomiting. Confusion, moderate TBI RGCS 9 to 12, admission for observation, higher risk of deterioration, intravenous access monitoring, continuous vital sign and neuro checks, repeat imaging, if neurological status worsens. Pain control sedation may require intravenous analgesics, example, fentanyl 1 to 2 mcg kilogram IV, and sedation for agitation, severe TBI RGCS less or equal to 8, airway protection, rapid sequence intubation, RSI, if needed. For RSI in pediatric patients, typical medications might include etomidate, 0.3 mg per kilogram intravenous, for induction, ketamine, 1 to 2 mg kilogram intravenous, alternative induction agent, especially for hypertension, rocuronium, 1.0 to 1.2 mg kilogram intravenous, for paralysis, intracranial pressure, ICP, management. Manitol, 0.25 to 1 g a kilogram intravenous bolus, can be repeated if ICP remains high. Hypertonic saline, 3% 5 milliliters per kilogram bolus over 10 to 20 minutes, carefully monitor sodium levels. Sedation analgesia, continuous infusions, example, midazolam, fentanyl, to maintain proper sedation level and prevent spikes in ICP from agitation or pain, blood pressure optimization, maintain cerebral perfusion pressure, CPP, for pediatric patients, keep systolic blood pressure above recommended minimum for age, antipoleptics, consider prophylaxis, example, levetiracetam 20 mg per kilogram intravenous, if high risk of seizures, neurosurgical intervention, emergent consultation if there is an epidural hematoma, subdural hematoma, or depressed skull fracture requiring surgical management. Monitoring and ongoing care, neuro checks, frequent GCS reassessments, pupil reactivity, motor and sensory evaluations. Monitor for signs of increasing ICP, it changes in vitals, decreased level of consciousness, pupillary changes, ventilation targets, avoid hyperventilation except in acute herniation scenarios. Mild hyperventilation, PACO2-30-35 to mm of mercury may be used short-term to decrease ICP, temperature control, fever increases metabolic demand, manage actively with antipyretics or external cooling measures, Nutrition glucose, early enteral feeding when possible, maintain normal glycemia, hypoglycemia can worsen brain injury, supportive care, seizure control, sedation. Analgesia, DVT prophylaxis, when age appropriate, and infection prevention. Disposition and follow-up, our story draws to a close only when the patient's condition is stable. Some children may need prolonged ICU stays, rehabilitation, or outpatient neuroassessments, discharge with follow-up, in mild cases, once stable and fully oriented, provide detailed instructions, red flags, follow-up neuro checks, and activity restrictions, especially regarding sports or play, dot, rehabilitation, physical, occupational, and speech therapies for children with lasting deficits. Cognitive assessments at school if learning or concentration issues arise, family and caregiver. Education, guidance on safe home environment. Injury prevention, helmets, 
seat belts, supervision, dot, emotional and psychosocial support if the child experiences long-term effects. From the initial spine-tingling phone call to the final triumphant discharge, pediatric head injury is a high-stakes medical drama. Mastering your role as the emergency medicine director ensures each act flows seamlessly, from swift primary surveys, accurate classifications, timely imaging, and precise medical or surgical interventions, to the ultimate goal of a healthy child taking a bow and returning safely home. The story ends here, but your vigilance never does. The next show could begin at any moment, another child, another head injury, another call to action. With these protocols, guidelines, and treatments deeply rehearsed, you stand ready for the spotlight, and so we say, that's a wrap. Keep this script close, for in the realm of pediatric head injury, you are both the director and the hero. May your stage always be well lit, your cast prepared, and your patients safe.